Hello everybody, this is 3D Underground Workshop. My name is Trisha Snyder and welcome to our tutorial for the resin bracelet. So to start off, we're going to use 24 gauge wire. You're gonna cut 10 two inch pieces and then you're gonna wrap it around whatever object you have that will make it a 1.25 or one and a quarter um, diameter loops. Now you can use different sizes if you like you can guesstimate your size kind of like what i did i'm just using my paint brushes i use the same ones and i have them marked so i get a consistent flower each time however you can make it bigger or smaller there's no set way to do that so you're going to make 10 of these loops and when you make the loops, when you go around whatever object you're using to measure, make sure that you make them fairly tight at the base. You want them to be pretty round. The looser you make the wire, the more oblong they're gonna be. So if you make them nice and tight and straight, it'll just be a lot easier for you to use the pliers on them later and to dip. So here I'm just making those loops in the same spot on my brush every time. And later in the video, you'll be making six more of these, but you won't crimp them the way I'm gonna show you how to crimp these. So I put that later in the video because those are gonna be for the leaves on the sides of the flower. So in the meantime, I'm twisting these and I'm going to go ahead and crimp them around the edges. I do each one individually. When they're this small, it's very difficult to do like all of them at once or even two or three at once. They just slide around too much. So it's a little tedious, but it gets the job done and it's very important that you do this. Otherwise, it just won't look so delicate and flowery. It'll just be very plain looking. So as I crimp around the edge of each one of these, um, when I get done with the crimping part, you squeeze it together just a tiny bit and loop the back end of the top of the petal over, just so it kind of has that curve, that little bit of a curve that gives it more of a petal-like. You don't want them to be completely straight. So here I'm bending it, and then I'm gonna squeeze it in the middle just a little bit to give it a little bit more shape. And I'll show you why here in just a little bit. In the meantime, go ahead and do the same loop style but you're gonna do it with the smaller tool. So I used a smaller paintbrush and I did um, a one and a quarter size, I believe, um, petal. And that's gonna be your middle top. This, These are gonna be your middle bottom and your very bottom. So this is going to be the middle top of the flower. It's going to be like the stamen, the, the little ball in the middle of a rose. Um, so what you do is squeeze a piece of wire in half, make it pretty thin, twist the bottom, and then you're going to take your needle nose pliers or you can use your looping pliers and loop that whole section over just a little bit and make it kind of like a half circle or partial circle. And you can do this either way. I'll show you both ways. I do it 
with whichever tool I happen to have. The needle nose pliers, regular needle nose pliers, has a rounded edge, so it really doesn't take much to go ahead and do it with that as well. So now you can see they're both almost like little hooks and set those aside. So now we're going to go ahead and dip and I use Craftica UV Resin Dip. It's much thicker than regular UV dip, so please don't mistake this for regular dip. You'll need to get this if you want to dip. I've tried it with regular UV dip and it just doesn't work. This stuff is the best thing ever and I use it exclusively. So you dip it in and just gently scrape it off the sides. Um, I do a tutorial for this in my um, YouTube channel if you'd like to look it up. It's the first one that I've done. Um, it's for the peony flower. And it's much bigger, but all sizes work basically the same except for one little part that you'll see if you watch the video. But we're doing this one. So you want to get it a little bit um, cured here, make it so it's tacky, um, and then you're going to put it under your UV lamp because you're going to run out of batteries if you hold it on um, with the flashlight too long because there's a lot of these. So just get them so they're tacky so they don't stick to anything. Use your mat, your silicone mat like I'm using, and put it under your lamp and cure it till it's hard. like when you pick them up, it sounds kind of like little pieces of glass tinkling together. I use a UV nail lamp. As long as the nanometers that you're using in your UV lights are between 365 and about 400, you're gonna be fine as far as curing. The wattage doesn't matter quite as much. It just cures faster or slower depending on the wattage. Um, mine is 125 watts, so it cures pretty fast. The um, old one that I used to have was only 36 watts and it also cured just as well. So it doesn't really matter. You don't have to go expensive with that. So now I'm dipping the stamen, the middle part, middle top part of the flower. And it doesn't have to be hollow on the inside. Um, it's just going to be, when you dip it, it's going to kind of almost look like a teardrop on it. And that's fine because you're not going to even see that part. So you want to get it nice and cured, put it under the lamp, get it nice and hard, and then set aside. And we'll go from there. So here I've mixed up a little bit of mica powder with just a small amount of regular UV resin. I don't usually use the resin dip for this because it's quite thick and I want it to be thin. The key with this is to paint it on very, very thinly and use layers. You're going to paint it on, cure it, make sure it cures very hard, and then you're going to uh, put another layer on when you hold it up to the light it should be if you want it opaque you shouldn't be able to see through it and if you need to do the back side to make like a third layer to make it that way that's fine your first layer isn't going to look great most of the time so just keep touching it up just make sure you don't overlap over your wire because you want that wire to show through 
you can always wipe the edges I've just done. And I'm going to do the same thing with the middle top with the stamen. Just paint very, very gingerly over the very top of that. Try to let the gold show through, but if it doesn't, that's okay as well. It's very small. So now we're using the UV resin dip again and we're going to basically glue the petals together. You'll need just a small amount of UV dip on the very end of a toothpick or I use um, a 20 gauge wire and just make a stick out of it. It's very easy to clean off. So you're going to take each petal and there's a bowl shape that you've made with the UV dip and the way you've bent the wire and then it's going to have a little downturn on the top of the petal. You want that bowl shape facing up and the turn down is going to be the petal going over the edge just a little bit. So you want to put just a tiny bit of UV resin on the edge of the flower or the edge of the petal and then you're going to put them together and you're going to cure it just enough to make it stick. You don't want to cure it hard at this point. I brush off the excess so that we don't have lumps, um, but that's going to get covered up anyway, so it doesn't matter one way or the other. I just like to have it smooth. So get it in the position that you want. Love UV resin dip, love UV resin because there's no time limit. You can mess with it all you want to, and then you cure it to make it hard. So cure it just enough to make it so that it's still pliable, but it sticks together. And then you're going to add another puddle the same way, and you're gonna go all the way around and make sure that you have five forming a complete circle. The last piece is the hardest piece. You really need to try to fit it in between the last two petals. Try your best to not overlap it, both, both petals on top or on bottom. Try to get it so that the petal is on the top of one and possibly on the bottom of the other. But as long as when you turn it to the side, they're all pretty evenly spaced and even all the way around you're going to be fine. It does take a little practice. Um, it took me a while, but you have time, like I said, with the UV resin, you have time to put it in whatever place you want. And if you need to start over, just get a little paper towel or a paintbrush, a dry paintbrush, and just wipe the UV resin off. Take a breath or set it down, come back and try again, and you'll eventually get it. Once you have it in place exactly where you want it, go ahead and cure that. And now that it's all together and you don't have to manipulate it or bend it, you can cure it under the lamp so that it's nice and hard. You want it to be very firm. You want it to be firm on the front and the back. So cure it upright and then turn it over and cure it. Now, if you find that your puddles are a little bit lacking as far as being able to be turned down a little bit, if one is a little straighter than the others, at this point, you can take your pliers or your fingers and just roll the, 
little tip of the edge down just a little bit. They're still a flexible enough to do that at this point. Now you're gonna be working on the top middle and you're gonna be using those four smaller petals that you created earlier. Go ahead and snip off the excess wire and you can either use three or four. It really depends on how flexible they are and whether or not you have the space um, to put them in the middle. Uh, sometimes I can get four in there. Three looks just as, just as well, just as good. Before I glue those on, I'm gonna go ahead and put the stamen together. I like to put two together. Three just seems a little too bunched up. Um, if you can get them smaller than this, three might work, but two is just fine and sometimes I even just do one. Um, but I put them facing opposite directions, hold them really tight because you want them to be really smashed together and then put just a little cup of couple of drops of the UV resin dip on, cure that really well, and then we'll come back to that in just a few minutes. Now take your smaller petals and you're going to dip them in the UV resin dip just a little bit. And then you're gonna place them on the inside top of the flowers. And again, you want that little bit of a curve, the bowl shape on the top and the curve of the end of the petal going down. Just like with the larger petals, you don't wanna cure these completely. You want to still be able to move them around, but you need them to stay in place as they kind of tend to float around and slide around on the top of the flower. So cure them so they're just tacky, just able to stick where you want them to stay. And then you're gonna lift them up a little bit, give them a little dimension, and you're able to take them and move them around, kind of twist them around so that they fit together nicely. You can see I'm using my leather hole punch, but you can use a toothpick. You can use anything that has a point on it um, and just slightly lift those petals. 
cure it a little bit, then lift them a little bit more and cure them until they're in the exact spot that you want them. Again, the last petal is going to be the hardest. It just has to fit in there just perfectly, and that's why you don't cure the other two hard. You really need to let, give them a little bit of flexibility. But once you get that in there, then we'll go on to the next step. As you can see, it's getting a little more difficult to lift the petals up. That's why you need to do them as you go. Um, because the more you try to cure the other petals in, the harder the UV resin will get for the first petals that you've done. So just be very careful and, um, and lift those petals as far as you can. And just make a little triangle if you have three, a little circle if you have four. And at this point, you may get a little bit of resin on your fingers. It may get on the petals. That's okay. As long as there's not droplets or globs of UV resin on the petals, go ahead and let that cure because you're going to cover it. You won't even see it. When you're about to put them in, make sure that you set them inside the flower first before you put any UV resin on it, just to make sure that they fit in there properly and they look okay. If you need to cut a little bit more off, go ahead and do that. If you need to build them up a little bit, say you've cut a little bit too much off, you can always cure just a little droplet of UV resin in the middle of that flower and then set them on top of that so they set up a little bit higher. But generally, you don't want them sticking out too far. So once you get them ex the exact place that you want them, go ahead and put the UV resin on and then cure it to hard. Now when I do a bracelet that has three flowers on it, I would stop here for the two flowers on each side. This is the exact size that you want for those two flowers. You can even make it a little bit more closed to make it more like an opening bud, but this would be perfect for the side flowers. However, this is the middle flower, so we're going to make it just a little bit bigger, which means we need to add more petals. So we're gonna take the other five petals that we had and we're gonna go ahead and cut off the excess wire. And you want to cut off the excess wire and just a little bit of the bottom petal. Seems fruitless, but you needed to have that whole petal to create the shape. But you don't want the petal, because it's sort of bent, you don't want the petal to be sticking out at the bottom. You want it as flat as possible underneath. So cutting off that bottom piece or half is going to be important. And then you want to take the petals and put them in between the other petals, behind them and in between. 
So that way it gives them a more full look, but it also gives that that texture and that sort of uneven look that flowers have. You don't want everything to be really uniform. So before you put the petals on, glue them on with the UV resin dip, you're going to go ahead and take off that back portion, the area that you were holding on to. Um, you want to get down inside the flower as much as possible and really clip those off. There's a tool that I like to use, it's called a third hand, and basically it is a tweezers that opens the opposite way. And it's perfectly okay now that you've had these petals curing for some time, they're all nice and hard, it's not going to hurt your flower at all to put one petal inside there. And that's really gonna help with this next part because you're gonna need to hold the petal onto the flower and hold the light so that it can cure in place. And at this point, just like the rest, you don't have to cure it hard right now. You wanna be able to move it around just a little bit and make sure that it's in the exact spot that you need it to be in. So this time, instead of getting the UV resin on the back, you're gonna get it on the front just a little bit, and then you're gonna place it up against the area that you want it and then you're going to go ahead and cure that just enough for it to be stable. Then just gently let go, open your pliers and let go, and it only takes a few seconds for it to cure on there hard enough for you actually move the flower around so that you can get them all the way around. So now you have your completed rows for the middle top of your bracelet. That's done, except for the back. We'll do that later because we're going to need to put a wire through the backing to hook it onto the bracelet. In the meantime, go ahead and cure that hard under your lamp. Now on to our leaves. You're going to do the exact same looping that you did with the first 
you're going to make six more of those and you're just going to pull them up with your pliers to a point and then you're going to just use your fingers and just bend them just slightly any direction that you want just so that it looks like a natural leaf so again i'm going to mix up some mica with some uv resin regular uv resin and i generally go for two extreme shades I'll get a very light shade and a very dark shade and I swirl them just a little bit and I'll show you how to do that here in just a second but you don't need a whole lot of resin again you're only going to be doing six of these leaves so just a little bit will go a long way so when I'm mixing these up I did say that we need to do two to three coats of mica powder with resin to paint them but with the leaves, since they're usually darker, you don't have to do so many coats and I use a smaller brush so that I can swirl them. So what I do is I put the dark on one end, the light on the other, I swirl them together, cure that hard, and then I turn the leaf over and I put the darker color completely over the back. That way it still gives it that completely opaque look but it's um, a lot less resin, so there's not a lot of buildup and you can still see the swirl pattern in it. And I think it makes a really nice leaf. So now that those leaves are nice and cured and you have the dark on one side and the swirl pattern on the other, go ahead and cut that excess wire off. You don't need it anymore. Make sure you just cut the very end off. You don't want to cut it like you did the last puddles where you're cutting them in half. You want to go ahead and cut them so that you can see the whole thing. And then you're going to put just a little bit of UV resin dip on the back of one of them and make sure that they're all facing the same direction. You're going to glue them side by side. Get them nice and cured. You want to cure these hard. You don't want any movement with these. So go ahead and cure them hard. And there's just enough of a gap between them to where the light penetrates all the way through. So now you're going to put that third petal on the top and put just a little bit of UV resin dip. Wipe some off if you need to. Get it cured nice and hard. And then you're going to do that again for the other side and you'll have two trio leaves. One for each side of your flower for the middle.
Don't forget to check out part two where we'll make the actual bracelet in a